Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we do have some um, Italian data that's going to be coming out. Obviously, it's late as usual. We know about Italian data. Um, we did have uh, some UK employment data come out. Uh, employment rate at coming in line at 5.1%, change of 30,000 they were expecting. They got a change of 114,000. Uh, cable a little bit lower on that. Um, and then, uh, see, as we come in today, uh, at the top of this next hour, we'll have uh, Eurozone HICP data across the board here. And then um, some Mexican data, which obviously the pace has been on quite the run over the last several days. Uh, then coming into the States, uh, monthly home prices be at 9 a.m. Eastern along with Case Schiller. And at 10 a.m. Eastern, we do have consumer confidence. And then we do have Jay Powell today. And we've seen the, the uh, uh, equities come off over the last half hour, uh, last hour, I should say, come off quite a bit uh, from where they were at. We can take a quick look there. And good morning, someone's saying good morning. And let's go and take a quick look over here into the equities, we've come off quite a bit all of a sudden. Uh, this, you know, the market rallied up and kind of st stuck around there for a little bit, and we've come off quite a bit here as we're pressing those lows again. Seeing this quite the drop here. Taking a look here at Bitcoin, uh, pretty good little drop here at Bitcoin, too. We've come back right back to the lows. Uh, if you remember, we talked about we were looking for support uh, yesterday. I think we were trading around 53-ish or around there, somewhere around here. And I was looking for a dip. I didn't think it would happen to that quickly, but I was looking for – well, that's how we came up with this line. We saw a fair value coming around at 48000 We actually dipped down uh, to 47 before spiking right back. And uh, we had the 50 uh, – percent retrace at 52.458 and I thought the market would run out of gas there. We did make it there and then we pressed even further to the 61 percent and you can see here the market kind of ran out of gas right here at this 55 and boy have we really come under some pressure. This is not a good move here. I mean it was amazing it came back so quickly but that has a lot to do with this move we've had but then to unravel so quickly I'm not making any and same thing, I was just looking at chart levels, not making any determinations to where we could go, but uh, certainly um, looks like we'd be pressing around here towards this before it's all said and done. Probably closer to this 42-ish. Um, not saying it's going to happen now. I didn't, I didn't even think this move, I thought this move would take a little bit longer before we got down to 48. Uh, and we did it within just several several hours after I was looking for that move down here. So, but uh, the way the market set up, I would think that we we would end up taking even out the 44, may dip out around here to 42 over time. Uh, we're actually pressing against this trend line. Take that out and see how much further we'll fall. And equities have really come off quite a bit, needless to say. There's some support here at 13. 167, pretty key area right there. See what kind of reaction we get there. And we have that long-term trend line coming up ahead also. Apply a little evening up in here. And let's take a look where we are with the currencies.
So Bitcoin battles for support of 50,000. Bitcoin dropped below 50,000. On Tuesday, as investors began to get a little nervous about the digital currency's lofty value and some leveraged players took profits. The cryptocurrency dropped more than 10% from its largest uh, one-day daily drop in a month to hit 48,575. The extends sharp withdrawal of more than 16% from a record high hit on Sunday, although Bitcoin remains up around 50, uh, 75% for the year. The market remained unimpeded uh, since the beginning of the month and to some degree since the beginning of the year, said James O'Quinn. Seeing way, some selling perfectly healthy and normal, he said, although that's some $1.5 billion in liquidation of leveraged positions on crypto exchange balance, Binance and was large and suggested retail investors might be selling. The crypto market has been running hot this year and money management begins to be taking this asset class seriously. A $1.5 billion investment in the cryptocurrency by electronic electric car maker Tesla this month has helped the valuation Above 50,000, Treasury Secretary Yellen also flagged the need to regulate cryptocurrencies more closely and also said money that Bitcoin is extremely inefficient as conducting transactions and a highly speculative asset. Ether coin link, uh, linked to the Ethereum blockchain, which often moves in tandem with Bitcoin, dropped more than 10% and last bought at 1613. They had a speculative run, uh, spectacular run in the shop reversal overnight is really not unexpected, like Michael McCarthy. But because we're so lacking fundamentals, it's the big figures that prove to be the support and resistance of 50,000, 40,000, 30,000 are the key chart levels. And the Chinese one firms as uh, dips ahead of Powell's testimony. Chinese one firmed on Tuesday as the central banks uh, <clears throat> set stronger guidance for the currency trading ban as the dollar lurked near six week lows ahead of federal, uh, Fed Reserve Ch uh, Jerome Powell's testimony before Congress. Uh, I'm even trying to pull up that story. Australia and New Zealand lows have a new uh, you know, multi-year highs amid commodity boom. The Aussie and New Zealand dollars were ch little changed on Tuesday, hovering near multi-year highs amidst surging commodity prices and a weak greenback. The Aussie dollar was at 79.25 after crossing the 79 mark for the first time since early 2018, the previous day, and the currency's next target is 80 cents. The Kiwi uh, East half a percent against the greenback to 72.34. Surging prices for market materials from oil and copper, lumber and milk powder pushed currencies such as the Aussie New Zealand dollar to their highest. Copper prices shot above 9,000. Dividend announcements for Aussie's mining companies to announce US dollar and offer payments in Aussie dollars and the prospect of even larger div dividends in the la uh, later year adds to the Aussie's demand story. 10 year bond yields in Aussie dollar fell four basis points to 1.55 on Tuesday. And the dollar hit six week low as focus turns toward Powell. The dollar um, nurse losses near a six week low on Tuesday and commodity linked currencies loitered around the multi year highs as investors focus shifted to how US Federal Reserve Jerome Powell might respond to resurgent inflation expectations. Surging prices for material from oil and copper to lumber and milk and powder push these currencies higher. However, the gains have come with a worldwide rise in inflation. Traders expect Powell who testifies at Congress at 1500 GMT to provide some reassurance that the Fed will tolerate higher inflation without rushing to raise rates. I think he will talk up the downside. If anything, I think we will give the markets a bit of a cold shoulder and say, 
um, Mr. Market, you're getting a bit ahead of yourself. There are plenty of risks, and the U.S. economy is a long way from full employment. Asia trade was dampened by public holiday in Tokyo, but renewed confidence that the lower U.S. rates will not rise anytime soon could clear the way for further gains in the trade expected currency, trade exposed currencies at the dollar's expense. The broad dollar uh, retains a heavy tone. Expect the dollar index to continue to testing the 90 support. Uh, said strategist turned true, and the dollar index fell to 89.94. So with that, we're just going to move into the analysis. For the most part, it seems to be a fairly uneventful morning. Other than what's happening in Bitcoin and the indices, uh, seems a bit uneventful in currencies. So the euro closed a few uh, pips below the bias chart resistance breakout level at 2159, which would generate a new upward leg. The breakout level will remain the, the same at 2159, but the resistance will be 2189 with support at 2089, 2091. So you can see here we had, that was our um, bias chart resistance at 2159 uh, from yesterday. We did get above it, but we didn't close above it. And we popped back here and we're dipping back again. So we're looking at 2189, 2091. Boy, the, the what you would call the NASDAQ is really getting peeled on. Onto cable. Cable, another new day, another new high. What can one say? Res resistance will be the weekly close, uh, March 2019, at 4088. Support will be four th uh, will be 140. So 4088. and 40. Well, they've really taken this, this uh, NASDAQ lower. Some support coming around as 3137 area. On to the Aussie dollar. The Aussie closed above 79 cents even. Resistance for Tuesday will be the stretch level of 79.33 with support at 78.18. Next to Kiwi. Kiwi closed at a new high again. Resistance remains at zone from 73.52 to 80. Support will be 72.39. On to the dollar cad. The dollar cad managed to defend immediate support at 2589. A break and close below opens a challenge at 2528. 
resistance remains 2684. So 2684, 2589, those remain the same. They were able to defend it. We'll see if they can continue to hold on, defend that once we get past Powell. On to the dollar peso. This thing has been on absolute fire. The dollar peso remains on a tear with solid close above 2062. Resistance on Thursday will be 2086 with support at 2058. Into the dollar yen. So the dollar yen started the day challenging the upside only to lay an egg uh, losing, uh, closing near 105. Support on Tuesday will be 474 with resistance at 524. And on to the cash dollar index. The dollar index closed weaker to start the week. Support remains the 89.90 with the close below opening a challenge to 89.25 with a pause at 89.64. Resistance will be 90.42. So we're still trying to hold that area there. So resistance will be 90.42. And support. will be the 89.90 slash 64. Onto the cross rates. Our resistance we had was for 77.50. That's gonna remain the same, although I think we are getting a bit tired up in here. Um, Uh, you know what? Here's that 77.50 we had from, which is that key weekly level. We'll actually go with right there, this wick right there, which is going to be 77.21. So we'll temper that to 77.21. And support, we'll keep that at. Uh, 76.10. On to the euro pound. This thing just looks terrible. That's still going to remain the same, which is uh, 86.15 with a high of 86.76. So no changes. Not really seeing that big. We're not seeing no movement here in FX for the most part. Uh, euro odd still struggling here at these lows. Support still going to remain the same. This weekly level of 52.98, no changes. And upside 54.23. On to the Euro Kiwi. We had 65.28. Uh, looks like we're getting a little bit longer on the tooth, but we'll keep the 65.28. And once again, we're not really moving anywhere. Resistance is 66.48. We did get up as high as 66.55 and we've dipped back. So no change there. And on to the Aussian. We had a resistance at 83.39. The high yesterday was 83.42. So I don't see any need to change that. And support's going to be 82.22. No changes there. Actually, we'll move it to right here which would be that high, which would be 82.40. So we'll move that up to 82.40. And finally, the guppy. Still holding up very well. We have 48.80 as our resistance. We did get as high as yesterday as 48.29. 48.80 is still going to remain the same. We're just looking at these weekly levels. 
You can see that there. What we're coming up. There's the 4880. So we got this little zone in here. I think we will struggle a little bit in here. And then finally starting odd. We had 7739 for our buy chart support. We got to 42, and the upside is going to be 7912. Um, actually, we're going to go right there with that wick. You see right here where the arrow is? Right there, that's going to be 7839. This actually, this wick is right there. 7847. So that'll be the high, the buy chart resistance. That'll do it for FX. Uh, taking a quick look here. Um, the copper that continues to push every day. It just seems like it looks like it's going to fade and it comes right back again. And I was saying I would probably wait until you got past um, the stimulus talk. People were talking about shorten it here. Then they're talking about shorten it here. Now, you see what I'm saying? We just keep pushing even higher. So you got to be careful. I'm not saying we can't pull back, but you have to be wary on this. Take a look at the 10 year note. This thing continues to remain fairly weak. The big move here is on the weekly chart. You can see how we broke them. Some support here at 34.28. And the low so far has been what 3501. So Russell still feel fairly strong. The yes, S is finally coming off with a little bit more. Well, I'm looking at a weekly chart. Still, look, holding up fairly well. It's NASDAQ that's just been completely obliterated. We are coming close into this 50-day moving average, which is right at 13,100, 13, essentially. So we want to be aware of that. Lastly, we'll take a look at gold. Gold has rebounded back to that key 1816 area. I'm merely wanted to look at platinum. Uh, we're just holding in this area here. No changes really in, in platinum. We did extend up in here. This level's key, 12, 1241. And if you're looking on a very short-term basis, it'd be this little wick right here, 1252. They may try and dip down there, but um, this is your key area, 12, 1240. If you get a close below that 1240, you're going to move much slower. But what you see here, we're kind of just hanging around here. The way the market's acting here, my guess is we'll want to press and to that test at 1251. And we already took a look at Bitcoin. We can take one last look and we'll wrap things up. Hmm. Well, yeah, we did just take it to a pretty good dip. We dipped further down here. Um, if you wanted to look at it from a this most recent low, We did get a good bounce off the 38%. And generally, when you get a good bounce off that, the next time you go down there, it's, the next level is not going to be enough, which would be 50%. My guess is then you'd have to go shooting for the 61%, which would be at 40,000. And we already talked about a move down here towards 42. But I think at this point now, because we came off so quickly, we rallied sharply, but we came off even sharply. 
Um, look how much of a dramatic move that was. I think any rallies people be looking to sell them. So um, I would be still looking for a move down towards that 42 ish before you start to see it bounce. With that, that'll be it. Thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar, and we'll see you in the chat room.